For more information on tutoring or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, please visit MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So consider this situation where we have three model atoms and each one only has one electron. The, the only difference between these three is what's going on in their nucleus. The first one has a plus one charge, so it has one proton. The second one has a plus two charge, so two protons. The third one has a plus three charge, three protons. So we know that opposite charges attract, so the nucleus, having a positive charge, is going to attract the electron towards it. And it's an attractive force, an electrostatic force that's pulling on this electron to pull it in. Okay. Likewise, that happens here in the second situation, except it's a more pronounced because of the higher charge in the nucleus, plus 2 versus plus 1. And with the plus 3, that's going to pull even more. So there's a greater electrostatic force there. Electrostatic force is denoted by F sub E, and it's proportional to the magnitude of the charge. Okay. So the difference between these three situations is really their nuclear charge, more specifically their actual nuclear charge. The actual nuclear charge of the first is plus 1, the second is plus 2, and the third is plus 3. Okay. So now you'll notice they're all pulling on just one electron. That's an important idea because what happens if there's more than one electron? To answer that question, we will kind of want to compare um, helium to a, a helium plus. Okay. So both of these have two protons in their nucleus because helium, by definition of having the at atomic number of two, has two protons in the nucleus. So the atom has two electrons, and those two negative charges balance out the two positive charges of the nucleus, so the overall charge is zero. Whereas the helium plus, because it lost an electron, it lost the negative charge, the overall charge of this is plus one. So what's going on? In the first case, the nuclear charge will pull on the electron and attract it. And what happens is since that electron is the only electron out there, it's that this nuclear charge is really acting only on this. So that one electron will quote unquote feel, that one electron feels all of the nuclear charge that is present here, right? This, this nucleus and its charge is pulling entirely on this one electron. When there's more than one electron, though, that kind of changes. You can imagine, and you might already be thinking that, that, you know, why are these two electrons so close to each other? Shouldn't they repel? The answer is yes, they should repel. But let's just imagine that this electron here gets pulled in such that it's located here, closer to the nucleus. Okay? It's being attracted to the nucleus because it's a negative charge. The nucleus is positively charged. They're attracted. But so is this one. This one's also attracted. This, this second electron is also being attracted by this nucleus. But you can imagine that if this electron, this, this first one here, is, is present there, then this second one coming in would be a problem because they would repel. And that's kind of what happens. The one, that's, the one that's here will kind of shield or block this one away, repelling it away, okay? causing that one to be repelled. Okay. So what's happening here is that each electron quote unquote, shields the other from getting closer to the nucleus. And what happens is that the nuclear charge is not felt or experienced in its entirety by the electron. So it's kind of like this nuclear charge is being dispersed between the two, right, as opposed to pulling on, on each of them with its entirety, okay? So this concept is called electron shielding. So even these two, these two HE and HE plus, HE and HE plus, both have the same actual nuclear charge because their nuclear charge in both cases is plus two. But HE plus has the greater effective nuclear charge and HE has a lower effective nuclear charge because the charge that's felt by the electrons here and here is less than the, the charge the electron feels over here. Okay? And it's due to this shielding. Basically what happens is that when there's more electrons, there's more shielding. And when there's more shielding, the, 
the, the nuclear charge is sort of dispersed between the different electrons, the greater number of electrons. And thus, there's a lower effective nuclear charge, which is denoted as ZEFF. So the effective nuclear charge, what is it exactly? It's the actual nuclear charge minus the effect due to electron shielding. And that's often represented in this equation, ZEFF, representing effective nuclear charge, equals Z actual, actual nuclear charge, minus shielding, minus the effect due to shielding. Okay. So you can kind of think about it as this, this nuclear charge being sort of dispersed between the different electrons that, it, that are uh, floating around it. Whereas in, one, in the case where there's just one electron, that electron's feeling every single aspect of that nuclear charge. Okay. So, now the effect of shielding is more pronounced between inner and outer shell electrons. So in the previous case, they were kind of in the same energy level. But now, it's a situation where we have uh, more than one energy level, right? So the inner shell electrons, they shield the outer shell electrons even further, even more, to a greater extent, um, than energy electrons sort of shield each other in the same energy level. So this, this, these are the outer shell electrons out here. Let's see, these are the outer shell, that one there. That one there, those are the outer shell electrons. And these guys on the inner shell are actually sort of blocking the electrons out here from being felt by the nucleus, right? Or these electrons aren't able to feel the entirety of this, this positive charge in the nucleus because these electrons are kind of blocking them out. So what's happening is that the outer shell electrons are repelled away and shielded by the inner shell electrons. Okay. So you should you could sort of be able to draw from this that when we're talking about the shapes or the different types of orbitals, the s orbital, p orbital, d orbital, and f orbital, with as you go from s to p to d to f, you're you're going up higher in energy because the electrons are more likely to be further away from the nucleus. Thus, the effective nuclear charge as you go from S to P to D to F is decreasing. The effective nuclear charge increases going to the left, right? because the electrons are more likely to be closer to the nucleus in those types of orbitals, in the S orbitals. Okay. So this concept right, of shielding and of and of nu effective nuclear charge. Those two concepts are important, and we'll come back to them actually when discussing periodic table trends or periodic trends. Okay. However, as far as this series goes, this impacts the energy or the energies of atomic orbitals with multiple electrons because we said that the orbitals in hydrogen, which only has one electron, if they're in the same, if they orbitals have the same principal quantum number, then they have the same energy. That's not the case in atoms with multiple electrons. And this is part of the reason why, because of this aspect of shielding and effective nuclear charge. Okay, and That's what we'll see in the next video. So I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you, and happy studying.